Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update on this magnificent Monday. As always, we have a hell of a lot to get through. We're going to be starting things off with the week ahead of us in regards to economic data. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin's price action. We're going to be taking a look at the probabilities that Bitcoin is essentially repeating what we saw take place from March 2019 to February 2020, just before the last bull market kicked off. Very similar structure. Also, a little bit of correlation there in regards to halvings. Bitcoin very much just pulling back in a descending fashion, in a flag-like fashion, ready to see that continuation. There's a number of technical patterns that give us that confluence. Also, the macro environment. Then we are going to be talking about something that I missed, and this is in regards to Kraken and their case against the SEC. And we now have news that a judge has essentially said there's no such things as a crypto asset security. It doesn't show up anywhere, and it's basically just a made-up thing by the SEC to further their sort of tyrannical campaign against the cryptocurrency space. We've also got some interesting takes in regards to the Bitcoin ETFs failing from Jim Bianco. Of course, Eric Balanchunas, the man to watch when it comes to ETFs, has sort of replied to this. A couple of big uh, Twitter accounts also chiming in on this. And then we're going to talk about crypto ownership and how that has declined, um, certainly during this pullback. And that's very symptomatic of the kind of death by a thousand cuts that we've all been sort of enduring in the crypto space. Long, drawn-out pullbacks are way worse than short and sweet ones, uh, even if the short and sweet ones do more damage to the downside. As promised, let's kick things off with a look at the week ahead. Now, we did this a little bit yesterday. The main one for me is US CPI. Of course, this is come, supposed to come out at 2.6, down from 2.9. Uh, and core to stay relatively stagnant. I think if it does this, this is a generally good sign. Uh, also in the UK, we've got quite big news of UK GDP. And uh, Tuesday, we've got UK unemployment rates. And Thursday, we've got the European Central Bank rate decision. They're expected to lower rates to 4 from 4.25. So they're continuing to lower rates. The dollar will or, or the Fed will follow, thus lowering the dollar, thus seeing risk do well. That's our macro reasoning for being along the markets. And certainly when we take a look at Bitcoin, we think there is every technical reason to expect this to go higher. My best guess is that Bitcoin dominance starts to roll going into October on the back end of Bitcoin breaking out of this descending broadening structure that is very much just a pullback in what is a broader uptrend. It might not seem it. Certainly if you look at the moves that we've had here, these, some of these are 20% moves. You can imagine what the altcoin market's done under um, this kind of uh, way, if you will. But I very much think we've got a semiconductor ETF, a SMH, Vanek Semiconductor ETF on our hands. This is where I think, or what I think the future for Bitcoin essentially looks like. Interesting as well, you had an inverse head and shoulders here that got hit. This would be our 151k Bitcoin. Um, and ultimately, you know, you see a continuation out of this, um, obviously marching towards the $311 target microsoft very very sim similar microsoft was a great stop for us it's very common that when you get to an all-time high you consolidate um and often in the fashion that bitcoin is consolidating in uh, but ultimately we do think it leads to further upside and continuation before we dive into the kraken news remember there is a little bit of dixie strength coming in here on support i'd like to see this set up and roll the the, the retaliation move from the downtrend isn't engulfing to say the least so I do still think it's on a broader downtrend, certainly fundamentally. And in, in regards to the Forex pairs, we, we, we believe this also. Before I move on to some interesting Kraken news, I actually want to cover an interesting report from the, uh, who was this? The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. Do prices change affect crypto ownership? And the answer from this is indeed yes. The October 2023 survey in the figure makes the first instance of the life survey that collected crypto ownership data. While the market had risen somewhat since the prior year, it had been stable and, be and well below its pre-crypto winter value for nearly six months. Ownership was fairly consistent with the prior years at 17.7%, considering the slight difference in questioning focus. After October 2023 surveys were conducted, Bitcoin price began to rise by the time 
the January 2024 live survey was in field. The price had decreased around 60%, recovering more than half of the market. Increase continued. And by the time of the April 2027, uh, 2024 sur live survey, Bitcoin's price had surpassed the pre-crypto winter value. We continue to see little changes in the ownership rate despite the significant increase in value over the previous six months. Only 16.1% of residents listed or respondents listed themselves as crypto owners. This was not statistically different from October 2023's ownership rate. Between April and July 2024, the most recent, Bitcoin's price fluctuated but remained near its recent high in the July 2024 live survey respondents reported a statistically significant decrease in ownership by 14.7 percent so what this is highlighting and i thought this was interesting not seen anybody else cover this is that crypto ownership was actually higher during the bear market low than it is currently in regards to the bitcoin and that's because retail isn't here in fact if you look at the bitcoin four-year cycles bitcoin very much ahead of where it should be this is symptomatic of um Essentially, the fact that institutions have pushed Bitcoin's price to where it currently is, hence, you know, there's, there's, there's no bid. And on the topic of institutions, I want to come on to a comment from Jim Bianco. So this is Eric Balanchunas, which I originally found Jim Bianco's tweet from saying Bitcoin ETFs have failed. And this is in response to an individual called BTC Charlie. I'm not too familiar with this guy. Um, he said, need help if Ibit has like above to 20 billion in assets in eight months so that's one bitcoin etf by the way and that's considered a failure then what would what word should we be using to describe an etf with seven million in assets so the interesting thing here in regards to this comment and of course jim bianco's comment is that bitcoin is the fastest growing ever etf in history to call that a failure, ladies and gentlemen, I think is blasphemy. Okay. However, we will explore Jim Bianco's points on this and you guys can make your own decisions um, up on the subject matter. So let's dive into Jim Bianco's tweet. You can see one spot Bitcoin ETF update. Uh, inflows, now outflows. Holders have record losses. It's only, you know, this is a year or so thing that we've had an ETF. Advisors, uh, minus 10% of them hold Bitcoin boomers never came. I don't agree with that. And also these things take time. If you look at surveys from, who was the survey we were looking at? Uh, from Ernest & Young's uh, consultancy division, they actually said that it was something like 97% of, uh, of, of the 277 large asset managers and firms were actually considering getting into crypto more heavily over the next couple of years. Uh, it's not an adopted vehicle. Okay, instead a small tourist tool and on-chain is uh, returning to TradFi. Rather interesting. So total assets in the spot Bitcoin ETFs are now four, uh, $46 billion. That's significant. Downturn from its June leak of uh, $62 billion. The $46 billion asset is the lowest since February 12th. This year, by the way, you're, of course, going to get fluctuation. I think that very much is in line also with Bitcoin's price action. I don't agree with this at all. I think this is a bad take from Jim. And I think Jim is somebody that typically gives great takes, but maybe has a dog in this fight. Daily flows are in the top panel and cumulative flows are in the bottom panel. 12 billion flows in the first two months, 4 billion flows in the uh, over the next six months, 1 billion flows over the last three months and 1 billion outflows over the last eight days. So, you know, interesting. You know, you can definitely see a dec decrease in regards to uh, flows. However, look at the cumulative flows. You're going to have blips, you're going to have bumps, but ultimately they are up. You know, so to say this is a fail, I think is, I think there's a dog in this fight from Jim, to be honest. Um, and I don't agree with it. Um, in terms of his take on it being a fail, I think everything suggests it's, that, that it's largely not. Also, he hasn't factored in the whole grayscale sort of incident, if you will, or um, factor. The blue line shows an average purchase price of 16 billion inflows um, shown above, currently 61K. This is their price. 
With Friday's spot Bitcoin close at 52,000, the spot BTC ETFs are sitting at a record 2.2 billion in unrealized losses, 16% underwater. Uh, who is buying these funds? The answer: small tourists, online retail. I doubt it. I don't think. I don't think retail is choosing to buy their Bitcoin via a, a, a BlackRock spot ETF. You can't even buy BlackRock spot ETF in the UK, by the way, as as retail. Anyway, uh, so the average trade size is under 12k. Uh, this is the lowest average trade since March. So yeah, okay. Um, number six, he says, how does the spot bit BTC ETF average trade size in black compared to the other popular ETFs? It's a small fraction of their size. Yep, you can give them that. I don't think any of this suggests it's a fail, though. Um, what about adoption of investment wealth advisors? Small Bitcoin ETF holdings account for 9% of shares outstanding. Hedge funds add another 12%, mostly basis trades. No directional bets. About 85% is not from TradFi institutions. Note that all holders are holding losses. Wow. Conclusion. Thoughts. The spot Bitcoin ETFs are not becoming a tool for TradFi boom adoption. BlackRock confirms this by saying that 80% of IBIT inflows are from self-directed online accounts. So imagine when they do come. CryptoQuants uh, analyze suggests that most spot Bitcoin ETF inflows were from on-chain holders moving back to TradFi accounts. So very little new money has entered the space. So far, these instruments have not lived up to the hype. It's the fastest growing ETF, Jim, ever. Goodness. Here comes the boomers. Very few have come. Uh, and I think they will come, by the way, and that's a reason to be more bullish. And those uh, that have holding losses and may now be leaving 1. billion dollars in outflows over the past 18 days can these tools be instruments of adoption yes maybe after the next halving 2028 oh rip uh, and after significant development of on-chain tools have occurred first i don't think we need on-chain tools at all and on-chain data is it doesn't really work in a bear market the first eight months of the spot Bitcoin ETF have shown that a build it spot Bitcoin ETF and boomers will come was never a thing. You've got to give these things time, you know, uh, patience and another couple seasons, including a winter or two and developers breakthrough are needed first. So I would say Jim's relatively bullish on the space. And this is kind of a little bit of confirmation bias, because if you look at the fact that Bitcoin is the best performing ETF, the fastest growing ETF ever, it did in a matter of months what gold did in 10 years how you can say that that is a failure i i don't know where he's going with that i really like jim's takes but this one is is a bad one in my opinion and if his take is and he's kind of right on this that the boomers aren't here yet okay well these things take time that's never going to happen overnight it doesn't take away that bitcoin's the fastest growing etf ever and on top of that you have got to also think you know they are still going to come if you look at portfolio management a big part of that is diversification and, and, and crypto ticks a lot of those boxes Let's dive in. And by the way, that, that other point about people being underwater, that can change very, very quickly. This is crypto. Um, another quick one to dive into before we sort of wrap the video up. Another call, this time in the Kraken case, confirms there's no such thing as a crypto asset security. Bad news for the SEC, whose entire regulation by enforcement strategy hinges on that failed premise. This is from Marco Santoro. Um, who is the chief legal officer over at Kraken. He's not your lawyer, apparently. Um, he says the SEC unqualified lost on this tokens of securities theory and will not be permitted to rely on it going forward. Instead, it needs to prove for every alleged transaction on Kraken that the Howey test factors are satisfied. They aren't, and we look forward to proving this discovery. Kraken will fight and Kraken will win. Come on. That's what we like to see, guys. Um, a, we, we're not going to get bullied as an industry. And the SEC has done nothing short of trying to do that. They, they totally took over Binance. The most hostile takeover I think I've ever seen. They threw CZ in jail, gave him four months, made him pay $4 billion. And I like CZ. I've got nothing but respect and, 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 and admiration from a fellow entrepreneur for him. But that is it from us, guys. It, we're still in the doldrums, to be honest, just to finish off on where Bitcoin's price currently is. 
0.85% up today. You know, we, we are going to embark on the same trajectory that uh, Vanek Semiconductor ETF went on and many others. It's just going to be a, a case of riding out September ready for October. We're very bullish on the industry. We don't think the Bitcoin spot ETF has been a fail in any uh, sense of the word. Um, maybe failed on the premise that boomers would be here, but, you know, you've got to give these things time. Um, and generally, it's just a case of being in it to win it. So on that note, guys, I'm going to love and leave you. Have a magical Monday. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's daily market update. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in tomorrow's update.